According to the 70-page report entitled Nigeria's Criminal Crude, the old theft amounts to around 5% of Nigeria's current 2 million barrels per day production, but has a wider impact because oil companies are often forced to shut down pipelines due to damage caused by thieves. Nigeria produces 400,000 barrels per day, well below its capacity, mainly due to theft and pipeline closures. It's costing the government a lot of money. It's roughly about 5% of Nigeria's export levels in 2012. And um, it's causing devastating environmental damage. The activity costs Africa's second biggest economy an estimated $5 billion a year in potential revenue. According to the report, recent increases in global oil prices have also spurred the theft. Before 2000, it wasn't really worth stealing when the oil price was low. And now with oil at $100 a barrel and more, um, it's very, very lucrative business. With the theft on what has been termed an industrial scale, the report follows a trail that shows proceeds are laundered through world financial centers and used to buy assets in and outside Nigeria. The report named the United States, Britain, Dubai, Indonesia, India, Singapore and Switzerland as likely money laundering hotspots, and the United States, Brazil, China, Thailand, Indonesia and the Balkans as the most likely destination for stolen oil. The proceeds of stolen oil washing up in um, other countries' financial systems um, could compromise their banks, it could compromise their refiners, and um, it could compromise anybody who comes into contact with this oil. Nigeria's oil minister Diazani Alison Madweke has called for stolen oil to be labeled blood oil, arguing that the security risk is similar to those in past and present mineral conflict zones such as Angola, Sierra Leone or the Congo. But the Chatham House report suggested violence associated with the theft is less than reported although armed gangs have destabilized the oil producing Niger Delta in the last decade. It runs through possible options for foreign powers interested in curtailing the practice, such as genetic oil fingerprinting, sanctions or regulating Nigeria's sales, but dismisses most of them as likely to do more harm than good. We identified five different countries that had a significant oil theft, but only one had, the, had it to the scale of Nigeria, and that was Russia. Nigeria is among the world's top 10 crude oil exporters and a key supplier to Europe, Brazil and India, providing billions of dollars in income for foreign oil and shipping firms, not to mention a local economy almost totally dependent on oil. Peter Kaba, CCTV. Now that report was received with a mixture of anger, frustration and disappointment in Nigeria, made worse by a perception that not much had been done to arrest the situation. The chief of the border kingdom in the Niger Delta, MAP, blamed the continued theft to well-connected individuals who were protected by some government officials. We read every day about, oh, it's 400,000 barrels of oil being lost, crude, being lost in this country. And it's spoken of as if it is a normal thing. When we were in government, it was even, I think it was 100,000 at the point in time, and they worked assiduously, and then it reduced to some 50,000. I think I remember those, those numbers, like yesterday. And today we're talking 400,000, and it's like it's normal. It's not normal, guys. It is the Nigerian state and the international oil companies that collaborate together that steal the oil 